Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Bhavan Shah, an optometrist out of the UK, and we're going to be speaking about teaching myopic children to accommodate on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Well, thank you again for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Today, we're joined by Bavin Shaw, and Bavin's an optometrist in the UK. It's awesome to have you on the show today, my man. Great. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be on. And uh, Bavin and I were just speaking at the time of us recording this, the queen has just passed away, and he was sharing a little bit about how the air is just a little bit different. Uh and uh, where is your practice located? So, so my practice is based in North London, right? Um, so quite in a, in a kind of suburban location. Yeah, uh, so it's quite busy, busy location. Absolutely. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about where you practice and 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 uh, and so forth? Sure. So I'm I'm a, a developmental behavioral optometrist. Um, I graduated. 1996 so about 26 years ago this year um I, I first started working for one of the uh kind of a small group of independent practices uh which were taken over by a larger practice and then i realized actually i uh, rather than working for multiple the way i like to practice i mean i'm, I'm a a problem solver i'm a, a technophile and i love to spend time with, with with people and i found that what that the only way i could do that is if i had my own independent practice um and and i started of kind of diving in a bit more to spending you know kind of really understanding people's vision people's uh, needs and, and in fact part of this journey into my peer management uh, maybe 2006 to 2007 2008 i remember i had a child eight-year-old that, that came to see me um, both parents myopic um, came to see me because they're having trouble seeing the board at school so, I mean, as, as you know, we can picture it, kind of very typical type of patient. Um, and, you know, you think, all right, it's going to be straightforward. Um, you know, we're going to have to give them glasses for, for seeing the board. Um, but this child could see, and I'm going to use the, the American, they could see 2020 unaided. Mm -hmm. um, so I, so there, there's part of my brain thinking, okay, great. But also thinking, hang on, you've, you've come to see me because you're having difficulty seeing the board. Um, so then I started kind of digging a bit deeper and I realized that actually that that what was happening was he was looking down and then when he was looking far away, it was taking a, it was a lag before he could see the, the board. And that, that kind of got me thinking that maybe are there some factors there that we can start identifying what's happening with with, with these children's visual system. And then, and then you know, six months later, he went on then slowly to become myopic. Um, and then pretty soon after that, maybe I started reading a little bit about um, the effect of peripheral defocus. You know, the information was coming out from the Far East. Um, and that kind of, I was kind of reading a bit about it, but, it, you know, it felt like a distant kind of thing, you know, just some research that had, that had come through. Um, and then when I had my own practice, then I could actually spend time looking at, at what was happening with these patients. Yeah. Um, I had I had a, a pair of twins pretty soon, or maybe 2014, that um, both had a little bit of, or both had convergence insufficiency, and one was was significantly more so than the other, was was literally seeing double vision quite, quite frequently. So I treated him with vision therapy at that time. Um, uh, both started off about minus one, but within about a year after that, one had progressed to minus three, where the other one, the one I'd done vision therapy on, hadn't progressed. Um, now, there's not very, very little research, and the research, the research says that actually vision ther therapy shouldn't make a difference. So of my kind of sample size of two, um, I felt that there, there may be something in there. Um, and then pretty soon afterwards, we, the... Um, we started looking at, at multifocal contact lenses, soft lenses, which we were doing at that time off label. Um, for in fact, for a child of a of a friend of mine who progressed significantly, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, there there was a, uh, you know it, the 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 rate of progression had slowed down quite significantly, um, mm -hmm. and that that really kind of got me into the into the, the yeah. whole process of do you, contact lenses. Do you think the um do you think the arena of being a behavioral optometrist was 
really what got you into the myopia management? Is that kind of what you're saying? Is that drove Definitely, that yeah. direction? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a really big part to that because firstly, having a uh, an understanding of, of what happens with the visual system. And yeah. I think also just being able to talk to parents about some of the processes that hap- happen. Um, and, and when I do an assessment, in fact, when I do a myopia management assessment, they're, they're, they're very similar kind of assessments in terms of, of visual function. Right. But actually just explaining the process to parents, uh, explaining the process to children, I think has has given me a pretty good grounding as well. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the binocular vision and the behavioral side of this. Um, as, as you may know, my and many of my listeners know, my wife has a vision therapy clinic here within our practice. And years ago, I was discovering that they were uh, doing some myopia management, quote unquote, in the uh-huh. therapy room. And, uh, and then I was doing it with contact lenses and, uh, you know, never the two crafts, uh, paths part, you know, connected with each other. We were just like doing our own thing. Yeah. And, uh, so we've worked on developing a little bit of a screening protocol with any of the children to decide whether they need to go down the binocular vision, the behavioral side, or whether they move into the contact lens side. You do both. So yeah. how does that work for you when you see a child, work with them on the behavioral side, think about it. Okay, this child could go to ortho K or soft multifocals, spectacles or whatnot, or this child needs vision therapy. How do you how do you work through that? That's a that's so, that's a tough so, question. Yeah, it, it's it is a very tough, yeah, because 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 they have varying degrees of needs. Some of these children. Oh. So some of them, um, you know, we can resolve some of the difficulties relatively uh, with straightforward within a few sessions. Some of them, I'll have to have a conversation with the parents and saying, look, th- these are my findings. Um, it would really benefit to go down this route as well. Um, and then you can leave it up to the parents and the child to take a decision. Do we want to go down a route of, 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 a, of a vision therapy program in addition to the, uh, the myopia management? Um, so that, 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 that kind of happens sometimes. And, and, and often you'll find when you're trying to fit children with contact lenses, say if they may have sensitivity issues or they may have sensory issues going on at the same time, which you need to kind of override a little bit to be able to even get a contact lens on eye. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some, lots of interesting conversations and, and, and having to right. Right. You know, demonstrate. How do you, how do you whittle that out with a patient when you, uh, the mom or dad comes in with the child and they're progressing in their myopia. And then it's a discussion around vision therapy. How, how does that conversation go? Um, so, so often I'll, I'll do a screen anyway at the beginning. So that's part of my assessment. So, so we'll have a, an idea and then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll normally ask them, you know, are there any areas where say, for example, the, the, you'll, uh, quite frequently I'll have a, a child that may see double vision, but actually hasn't mentioned it to their parents. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll do some, some binocular vision tests. You can see that they break down very easily and then just ask the child, Oh, do you ever see two of things? And then suddenly we got, they, they're re- revealing that they're, that they're getting frequent double vision. And even the parents didn't even know that was happening. Um, so, so sometimes you kind of, you can tell what, what they may be experiencing um at school you know if they're missing missing lines when reading frequently um and and often the parents will will be aware that they they're not that they're not where they should be in yeah. the areas well it's a key component you know i think what oftentimes happens especially in in our myopia practices is we see children who come in who are a diopter or a diopter and a half, maybe two diopters undercorrected because they didn't know the parent didn't know that they were myopic. Yeah. They come yeah. in with a uh, an automatic plus two add on their on their eyes because they yeah. haven't been corrected, and then their amplitude of accommodation and their accommodative ranges are all screwed up. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I you know been wanting to see what you thought about this was. Do you fully correct that child right off the bat with contact lenses, glasses, orthokeratology? Um, and then what are your expectations for their binocular 
uh, binocular assessments, accommodative assessments after they have that new prescription and in what time frame? So, so often I will, um, I'll, in most cases, I will probably give full correction um, and then just see what happens. I'll, I'll just do some binocular vision tests and some accommodative tests with the correction and with, with lenses. Uh, soft lenses make it very easy because then you can just get some soft lenses there and then put them in and, and, and have a pretty good idea of what's happening and then uh, do a bit of training particularly accommodation and, and and binocular vision and most kids it doesn't take them long to adapt yeah you know they can they can and sometimes it can happen just within the consulting room just a bit of a bit of practice with accommodation a bit of practice with with binocular vision and actually they 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 they, they take to it very well uh some i may have to to do a little trial and again soft lens make it very easy you can do a little trial over the space of a, a couple of weeks or a, a month or so um, and and get them get them working uh, well enough to, well enough to continue. Yeah. Well, you know, I see that that prime example of that child who, when I give them the full correction, getting them six over six or twenty over twenty yeah. vision, um, yeah. you know, now now it's blurry up close, right? And yeah. uh, and and I'm going to see them back in a month, and I anticipate that that's made up for, but. You know, what, what do we do in the meantime? You know, do we, uh, the, the, our myopia management options typically help them, right? If we do a soft yeah. multifocal, then they got that near ad in the multifocal. If yeah. we do yeah. a smaller although, although, uh, optic zone. I mean, I find that they, they we want to try to avoid them using that ad as an ad um, because we, we need that ad as a, as a peripheral, peripheral defocus. So you need them That's accommodating. Right. Um, yeah. so, so, so I, I will normally when they've got the lenses in, I'll, I'll, I'll do some accommodative work there and then just to see what, how they're going to, how they're going to cope well, and now, give them for, something. forgive, forgive those of us who have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean by giving them some accommodative so, work? Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so basically, yeah I'll, 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 in some cases you've got to just teach them how to accommodate. I've, I've even had some right. sometimes how children children of, of optometrists and I've, and I've had to show them how to, to accommodate so um it, it may be something simple that that like where i'd uh i don't know if you've heard of trombone reading where you just kind of bring a bring a chart further away and closer to them with yeah with with kind of near text um that's an easy one to to get started with or some kind of jump accommodation activity uh where they have to accommodate close up and then relax their accommodation and reaccommodate um and and kids actually are really adaptable they they will you know you just give them a uh give them a task to do and, and and in most cases they're quite compliant um they'll give it a go um because they just they're in that i think they're in that frame of mind where if they're told right let's let's do this they'll they'll comply and then they pick it up very very quickly as well yeah you know oftentimes in our practice and i think that this might work for some practices, but many myopic practices, they don't do that, right? So they don't have any vision therapy. They don't think about mm -hmm. binocular vision or accommodative. They just work on yeah. that, that correction. And it may behoove them to do some very light vision therapy with these accommodative rock procedures, looking at a hard yeah. chart and looking up close, yeah. far away, up close, far away, up close. Teaching them to work that accommodative system is such a yeah. key component to them being able to adapt because yeah. we do want them accommodative appropriately in order for them to get the full effect of their myopia management system, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I think as part of an assessment, we should be just looking at some of those factors as well before we even go to, to having a lens on there. And then we can anticipate a lot of the, the, those kind of difficulties. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that I've really appreciated about your writing over the years is how you kind of go into fully understanding that child and understanding that parent. What are some of the things that you've learned and uh, some of those things that you kind of help teach kids with regards to myopia management, right? Convincing mm -hmm. a child who does not want to wear a contact lens or spectacles or soft multifocals is an obstacle. What do you it, find it, it is helpful? Be, yeah. um, so I think I think firstly, the, the, initially, I'll, I'll I'll have a, a conversation first with the parent and as well and and with the child as well, depending on where we are. If it's a a, a child who's if it's their first RX, you know, I'd, I'd want to show them that it's going to make a difference when you wear these. 
you know is, is are, are they cop you know are they sitting in the class and having to copy things down from the the person sitting next to them because they can't see the board and everybody else is copying things down faster than they are yeah um, and then I'll, I'll kind of show them the difference in in almost all cases I think they, they realize actually yes we do need to do something in, in order to to be able to see you know I'll take them out I'll take them to the to the front of the practice and if you look across the road you can see some trees um, and then with you know with the glasses on you you can see the leaves and without them you can't um, so just making them aware that, that this is going to make the difference um, and then having the conversation with the parents um, so firstly having an uh, I, I want to see what their understanding of myopia is first um, mm -hmm. are they myopic themselves you know have they have they been through that that pain of every time they have to go to another to an, uh, 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 for a sight test and then having a strong needing a stronger pair of glasses what it's like you know first thing in the morning when you you know you've got to grab your glasses before you do anything else so they are they aware of that um and then if they're not i'll i'll, I'll probably give them a demonstration of, of what it looks like for their child yeah i think it's important that. for for kids to understand that you know that that if things get worse it can be really difficult right and having yeah. them understand the benefit of the quality of life of having that clear vision like you pointed out right and mm -hmm. uh and doing this will make it a lot easier and I think yeah. that's a, a really key component. But then there's also times where kids don't want to do something, but the parents want to do it. And then yeah. you just have to have the parent convince the kid, right? There's there's yeah. being a parent and then there's yeah. being a friend to your kid. And what we need parents to do is be a parent. Like this is doing the yeah. right thing for your kid. And it's it sometimes yeah. you're sitting in the exam yeah, room and you're like, stop asking your kid what they want. <laughs> yeah. You're the yeah, parent, and, right? and I always tell parents, if you ask your child, do do they want to wear contact lenses and they've never worn anything before? Of course, they're going to say no. Right. Uh, there's, I think I've only had like a handful of kids who wanted to go straight to contact lenses, no glass in between. Most of them, given a choice, they would have said no to contact lenses. They would have gone for the easy mm -hmm. option yeah. until I've actually then put a pair on their eyes and they've like, oh, actually, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. yeah, I think the question to ask the child after the parent says, do you want to wear contact lenses is, would you like a bowl full of broccoli? Yeah. <laughs> or would you exactly. like a bowl full of Brussels sprouts? And the yeah. kid's going to say no. And then you look at the parent and say, well, I guess they're not going to do either. Right. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> sharing yeah, with think, them the importance. That, that's of a, yeah. That's a great, I think I'm, I'm going to add that, that definitely <laughs> to, my, uh, to my repertoire. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I could talk to you for a really long time. I am so appreciative of you sharing some of your insights. I I love it when people are behavioral optometrists and bring that perspective in. I think my takeaway from this is that kid is not functioning very well far and near when I give them that vision correction. The giving them some of those accommodative demands, some of those accommodative works can be really helpful and then making sure yeah. that everybody's on board. It's awesome. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Definitely. No, it, it, it does. And then, and, you know, you can anticipate problems and, and I think it builds great rapport as well with, with the children because you spend a bit of time with them and, and, and they see that you're doing it for them. You're yeah. not doing it just for, for, for doing it. You know, you, 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 you generally want to help them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate being on the show. Thank you for uh, for spending some time with us. And thank you for what you do, all your writing and your contributions in the eye care space, myopia space. It's awesome. Much appreciated. Pleasure. Thanks. Great, great talk to you. And you're doing some amazing work. I love this podcast. Thank you, buddy. And thank you for joining us for this episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for new episodes every week on the Myopia Podcast. One, two, three, thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.